So as you have probably realised if you follow any of my patterns, I have a preferred way to join my crochet and I usually use double crochet on the reverse side of the work. But before I show you that, I'm going to show you a few other techniques um, which hopefully will illustrate why I choose to do my double crochet on the reverse of the work. Um, the first example I've got here is two pieces from the fruit garden crochet along that I've joined using double crochet on the right side of the work. So what I've done is I've just lined up the pieces, gone through all the corresponding stitches and done double crochet along the top there. Um, let's put my hook down. So from that side, when you can just see one of the motifs, you can't see the other one at the moment, but you can see that's a really nice looking join. But if I look at it from the other side, and this is what bothers me with crochet joins, is it doesn't look anywhere near as nice on that side and in fact on this piece you can also see where I've had to skip my slip stitch in order to get a neat join. Now if this was in the dark colour, this night shade, then obviously it would look better but I don't like the fact that when you open that out a join on the right side always tends to show that wrong side of the stitch as opposed to the right side. Can you see what I mean? If I open that up and show you that join it just to me it's just not I don't know not I don't know it's just a bit lumpy and you don't see the nice aspect of the stitch you see the back of the stitch um, so that's a double crochet on the right side of the work it does give you a nice ridge and I know a lot of people like the ridges on the right side but that's that's one of the reasons I don't do it is because partly because of the slip stitch but also because of always seeing reverse side of the stitch Okay, so that's reversing on the right side of the work. Sorry, reversing. So that's doing double crochet on the right side of the work. Okay, so this is another example of a double crochet join, but this time I've actually just taken, excuse my ends there, because I've not sewn my ends in on that one, but this time I've just taken one side of each of the stitches on the reverse side. It gives you this nice sort of tram line through the middle, but it leaves behind part of the stitch. So I'll show you how to do this one in a second. A lot of people do use this join because it's nice and flat. If you look at it like that, you can see it's a really nice flat join, but I don't like the fact that it does leave part of your stitch behind. Um, I'm gonna show you this one to you now. So as a rule, when you're joining crochet with double, double crochet, when you're finding your stitches, to find the first one here, I'm going to put my, my hook under the whole of that stitch. So when you look at it like that, you can see I've got the whole chain of the stitch on my hook. And then I would find the corresponding one behind it there, which is on that back motif. Okay, so that's stitch for stitch. And I would do a double crochet into the two of those. If you want to do this version that I've just shown you, where you actually just take part of the stitch, what you're going to do is take the back side of, so it's the side nearest to you of this motif, so I'm just taking one loop of yarn up and then I'm looking at that back motif, the second one, and finding the back loop of that one as well. So it's the loop nearest you on this one and the loop furthest away from you on the other one. So I've just got two loops of yarn and I'm going to do a double crochet into that stitch. So I find when I do it, I have to use the kind of hook part of the hook to find those corresponding stitches. And I also find I have to kind of open up the motifs a little bit more to find what I'm looking for. So this is a nice technique. It leaves a really nice flat join, but you do see one side. I'll just do one more and I'll show you how it looks close up. So you do see one side of that last stitch left behind. Okay, but if you imagine that was in the dark night blue, you can probably tell it's a nice neat seam, but it just depends whether or not you like that ridge. So on these motifs, what I've done here is I've done a slip stitch join, like doing a chain stitch. And it's a good join if you're running short of yarn. So I have used it on a few of my projects when, you know, I think I used it on Delft when um, the cream was running short and I didn't want to add another ball to the kit. But 
it's a nice join but if I look if you sh if I show it to you oh get my muddled up words there if I show it to you like that I don't know whether it shows but what it does is it makes the join like a little valley if you think of this as a hill and that as a hill it kind of creates a valley between the two which I think it's because it tightens everything up and pulls that I don't really know whether you can see that there um you yeah you can kind of see it but it's a nice join but it does make it a little bit um, I can really feel that difference there um, so if you look at the inside of the work and if I turn it that way you'll see that's just a slip stitch done stitch for stitch all the way along so this is the side I did facing me um, slip stitch into one stitch and the corresponding stitch through the whole stitch each time and you get that lovely chain stitch and I will have done that on a bigger hook, so I've done that on a 4mm, um, the crochet has been done on a 3.5. Um, and then when I look at the other side of that, it looks like a running stitch. So that's what it looks like on the other side, on the other motif. So if you look at that on the inside, can you see it's kind of trying to fold itself a little bit? Um, I think that's what probably creates the ridge. But if you're ever short of yarn and you want to join... Um, being economical with your yarn then that's a good little um, join and that's just done by doing a slip stitch which I'll show you next okay so I've undone my yarn and I'm just gonna do the last sort of five stitches using a slip stitch so what I'm gonna do I'm on a size bigger hook I think I said that already I'm on a four millimeter whereas the crochet has been done on a 3.5 and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the stitch the whole stitch in the on the motif that's nearest to me then the whole stitch on the motif at the back there and I'm going to do a slip stitch so I'm going to draw that through there and then when I've got the two loops on the hook I take one through the other one so I'm going to find the next one corresponding so I should have four yarns over my hook there that's two different stitches catch the yarn draw it through the stitches and through that chain so I'm just going to do about three more and you use a bigger hook because slip stitches give you a tighter tension. Remember, if you've done surface crochet on the fruit garden, you were asked to use a bigger hook. So you just make sure you've got that bigger sized hook. Oops, that's just popped because I've cut my end. And then just draw through there and finish with a chain stitch. And as I said, it's a nice neat join. Um, but it does give you that little kind of valley in the middle there. You can see it there, I think. Okay, so that's a slip stitch join. So this is my preferred way of joining. I've done double crochet on the reverse side of the work. I've used orange to make it really obvious where I've done my stitches. And what I've done is I've just joined stitch for stitch. You can see them there the whole way along that side. When I join into my first stitch I just do a chain, I don't do a double crochet into that stitch again because when you look at that from the front, if I just show you that, there's two loops of yarn through there that do look like the rest of the stitches there, can you see that if I hold it like that? So if you put another stitch in there it would start to look like two stitches, so I've just gone into those first two and done a chain and then done my next join into the next pair of stitches, okay? So that's what it looks like at the end of joining two motifs together. I get a really nice tram line. I've used this in designs as well and it's a really nice feature, especially if you do it in a contrast colour. Obviously you don't want to use orange on your fruit garden, um, but it's quite a nice little feature isn't it? And you'll see it's really nice and flat as well. Okay, so the temptation at this point is to join my next motif along this side or maybe turn my work and go along this side but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go on to my next two motifs that I've got here lined up so I'm just going to show you this um, laid flat um, so you can get an, a better idea of what I'm going to do okay so I've gone a bit higher in the hope that you can see what I'm up to don't panic about the layout of these <laughs> if you're doing the fruit garden then don't use this as an example of what goes next to what. I'm just using my samples as an example. So I've joined these two together and now I want to put these two in. What I wouldn't do is come along there and then go along and join these two together. Or 
turn and go along these two. What I'm going to do is just jump from joining these to joining these two together along this same vertical line. Okay, so I'm going to show you that next. The reason I do that is because I think sometimes when you start to join and do lots of sort of different movements, you get a different kind of join at the point here where all four motifs meet. And that is where, when I asked about what people wanted to know, this was the area here where a lot of people said they had a problem. Um, if you're joining in the same colour, it really doesn't matter if you use these stitches more than once. You will see that they all get used twice anyway. Um, but what you don't want is if you're using a different colour like I am, a contrast colour, you don't want a load of different odd bits going on in here. Okay, so I'm going to show you that next. Before you start your join, it's always worth putting your stitch markers in. So you can see along these two edges I've got my stitch markers in. I've also got them left in here. I'm only going to show you this one. Um, I'm probably going to move them into here in a minute when I've done this bit. Okay. And when I've put those stitch markers in, what I've done is I've made sure that I've counted my stitches including the stitch mark stitches. So I've got 30 stitches on this bit and 30 stitches on that bit. The reason I do that is because if you're working along the side where you've got the slip stitch, where you've joined on that last round of the motif, you can run into trouble and it can look like you've got an extra stitch. So if you are working along an edge that's got the slip stitch, I would pop a marker in the slip stitch as well. Okay, so I'm going to get going here. I'm going to pick up this bit these are the two that I've already joined and then I'm going to pick up the next two which are these two and line them up so that I've got them ready to join. I'm going to remove the stitch marker, I'm going to identify the stitch so I can see it in my head which one it is, remove that stitch marker from the front one there and I'm going to put my hook straight into that stitch and then find the corresponding one over there. I've got a fly in here, I don't know whether you can hear that buzzing about. It's a hot day, it might be our last hot day so oh, he might not be here tomorrow, that poor fly. Okay, so what I've done, as you can see I've done, that's the last two that were joined on these two motifs and I'm jumping right across to the next two on the two motifs, the next two motifs. So I'm just going to look at that and check that both of those are in the central stitch of the three and they are. And then I'm going to just come along here and join using double crochet. So I'm through the two, catch the yarn and do a double. Through the next two, making sure I've got the whole of the stitch on both of them and do a double. Okay, so I'm going along, catching the two and doing a double. And I'm going to do that the whole way along, stitch for stitch and counting as I go. I know I've got to get 30. This side is all right actually because I know that I haven't got a slip, st a slip stitch from the previous round. So I'm just coming along here and making sure that I've joined stitch for stitch and that's what it looks like when you've jumped that join. So I'm going to continue along here joining the two pieces together and I'll show you that when I get to the other end. So I'm just coming up to the end of there. I think I've got about four more stitches left on both pieces. Sometimes it can look like you're running out. Usually on the one that's facing you, you can look like you're out of sync. But as long as you've got the markers in there, it really does help you to kind of get an idea of where you are. It makes you panic less, I think. So I'm just going to go into that one before the last two marked stitches. And at that point, I'm going to remove my markers and just join the last two. Now if I had two more to join into this vertical run I would now be jumping across to two more um, but let's imagine you've finished your whole row your vertical row or horizontal row of joining and you're just going to fasten off so at this point I do do an extra chain and just cut my yarn a good sort of 10 centimeters and then just draw that through okay so that's, it's like a book isn't it, opening a book. There we go, that's that one joined. And if you look here, that's that one joined as well. Okay, so you can see there's a little jump in there. 
where I've gone from one to the other. Okay. So now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my stitch markers back into here. I don't really need to worry about in here because these have all been joined already. I'm going to put my stitch markers back in here and then I'm going to join this way across those four motifs and show you what happens at the centre there. So I've put my stitch markers in ready into those top two pieces and if I turn that round it actually just is pure luck that I've actually <laughs> used two motifs that have got their slip stitches. I've put a marker into the actual slip stitch and the stitch that the stitch the slip stitch was made into. So I've got one in the slip stitch and one into the stitch behind that on both these pieces. So it's the perfect um, example piece to show you on because I'm going to show you how to get a nice neat join there. You've got to be really careful on those edges that have got a slip stitch because you can end up getting a miscount because you think you've got two stitches there when you've actually only got one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join in over here. I'll show you the beginning of this bit here. If I move it over, I'll show you the beginning of this bit um, and then I'll show you what happens when I get to these slip stitches and obviously what happens at the middle here. So I'm going to show you the whole of this bit first and I think when we get along here I maybe don't need to show you anymore but that's, this is where I'm going to start um, and I'm using a 4mm hook which was the same hook that I used to make most of the pieces so excuse me you don't have to change your hook size um, bigger or smaller you're going to actually just use what you've used to make your pieces okay so I'm going to start so I've folded the pieces over as you can see and I've made sure that my stitch counts are right I've got 30 to find along here and 30 to find along the next two so I'm going to put my hook into, I'm going to actually remove the, I find it easy to remove the hook, the um, marker first. So I've found the first stitch and then I find the second stitch by removing my markers. There we go. And I've gone through both of those stitches. So they're the two corner stitches. Now, as I said before, in this first one, I'm just going to do a chain. I'm not going to do an actual stitch as well. So I've got a nice long tail there catch the arm through both the stitches, draw through and do one chain. And I'm not going to do another double crochet into that stitch. Then the way I hold them is I almost sort of line them up, well I do line them up, I line them up and I kind of pinch it so that I can see down onto my stitches. And the next stitch on this one is a half treble and half trebles can be a little bit tricky because they can look like they've got an extra yarn loop in them. Um, they look like that because they have got an extra yarn loop in them. Um, but I'm not going to do a stitch into that first one. I'm going to find the second one, which is there, and the corresponding second one on the other motif. Okay? So I'm just going to do double crochet along this edge. As I said, it's quite warm, so I'm actually a little bit sticky fingered today. Okay, so find the next one, and the next one, and do... A double crochet. Here we go. So I'm coming along, counting as I go. That's five, is it? Yep, five, six, pinching. That's seven. This is eight. There we go. That's eight, nine. You can hear the stitch markers, that's that noise. Ten. 11, 12, 13. I've reached the stitch before my marked slip stitch, okay? And when we were doing the fruit garden crochet along, I showed you in a lot of my videos how when I'm actually doing the next round on a piece like this, I would use the slip stitch for my stitch for my next round. But actually when I'm joining, I'm not gonna do that because when you've sewn your end in, you might have done it quite tight, and if you use that to join, you may end up undoing your slip stitch. So I'm in the stitch before, so I'm just going to join the stitch before like that, and then I'm going to remove the marker I've got from the slip stitch itself, there, take that out, and I'm going to put my hook into the next stitch, and that stitch that's got the marker on it. 
so that I'm marrying up the two actual stitches and not the slip stitch in a stitch. So I've got those two together and double crochet them together. So now I'm just going to work along here until I meet my join. I'm at the stitch before where my corners were from the previous join and I can see I've got one left on both sides so I'm going to do a, a double crochet into both of those. There's that one. It will feel a little bit tight at that point so I'm going to get those two together. Okay and then I'm going to go through these two so I'm going to find the corner from that one, it's already been used, it's there and the corner from that one that's already been used which is there and do those two together. Now this is the point at which some people do a chain stitch and actually if you do a chain stitch it does just give you a little bit more ease on the join um, or you can just go straight across to the next two stitches. I'm going to do the chain stitch so I'm just going to put one chain in there. It's up to you, I don't always do that. Um, I do do it when I'm using a contrast colour, I almost always use a little chain in there just to jump the join. And then I'm going to find the next two that have previously been joined. So if you're looking in here, it's, it's buried a bit. It's that one in there. It'll look a bit tighter than the other stitches. So I'm using that one. And then I'm ready to just carry along. So I'm going to carry along here until I meet my next marker where I've put my slip stitch here, which is this one. And when I reach those two, I'm not going to use the slip stitch, that one. I'm going to use the one behind it. Okay, so I'm going to show you that at the end of the round. If you were listening carefully just then, I referred to that as a round and not a row. But obviously I'm working in a row. I'm doing my join in a straight, not working in the round. I've got so used to doing technique videos. Um, but my language is still all over the place, like my leaves and leaves and flowers and petals and everything from my videos before. Anyway, so here I am. I'm at the stitch before my marked stitches on both pieces. So I'm just going to do that final one before the marked stitches. And then I'm going to remove my markers from both pieces and join that final stitch on both of them. So here we go. One and one and just join those two together okay so using double crochet so that was my final stitch and then I'm just going to cut my yarn and do my slip stitch okay so on this bit I found that slip stitch from the previous round and just made sure I didn't have an extra stitch in there um, just like I showed you on the other bit and when you look at that from the reverse of the work that's your join. Oh, isn't it nice in a set in a different colour? Um, so that's it on the back and then when you look at it from the front that's what it looks like at the front and when you look at those central stitches you should have that nice little box join there. Can you see that? And actually by doing that extra chain well, on, on that second join it does just give you that little bit more room for manoeuvre in the middle. It makes it a little bit looser. You can see the chain just there look okay and it should look like that from the front um, I'll do a close-up actually I'll put that down and show you that close-up okay so here's the join You've got this nice little kind of square join here I love that not loads of stitches just two really two stitches into each stitch and you've got a really nice neat join I hope you've enjoyed that um, and I hope it's made a few things clearer than they were before. Um, don't forget when you're starting your round, that's not a start actually, this is a start over here. Um, when you're starting your round you don't do an extra stitch into this first one, you just do your chain to join and just use your stitch markers to make sure everything lines up and you should get a really nice neat join. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that, I hope it answered some of your questions and um, I look forward to next month when um, we'll do another technique.